Hey guys, how you doing? It's Brad with atrepodcast.com, all things real estate. Really excited about my guest today. We have an incredible designer, David Rios, who is an eclectic designer with an eye for fusing modern mid-century and unique minimalistic styles together. Now he's been selling, flipping, and you know, designing homes in the Los Angeles, Orange County, and Palm Springs area for nearly 25 years. His clients absolutely love him, and he loves bringing the dreams of his clients to life. He's described as his clients by as being incredibly talented, passionate, with a wild personality and an incredible heart. David Rios has a style all his own. Welcome, David. How are you? How are you? Thank you for this opportunity. I'm excited to be uh, asked to be here, and uh, hopefully I can share my tips, my ideas, just to bring more enlightenment to your design, your real estate needs, and everything you can possibly think of all in one. Excellent. Well, David, you're a legend in this area, and I'm in LA, and I hear about you all the time, and, and you're just amazing. And I thought, you know what? This is a guy I really want to have on my podcast. I know you're big on Instagram, and you know, people follow you. I love your videos. I'm following you. You can follow me at, at, Brad, at Brad Roth Realtor, and, and I'm really enjoying you. So thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. David, it's a lot of work, but I keep up. <laughs> well, you do a good job. What are, the, what are the market trends in the Palm Springs area or Southern California right now? So right now, it's, it's number one in the nation as far as it used to be vacation rental destination. Yeah. Now it's in sales. And the, for that, the reason for that being is COVID has shaken up all these multimillionaires from the, the Coachella Valley to um, nice. San Diego to New York, Chicago, um, all the tech industry in San Francisco. People are now able to get away from the traffic and come down here where I, I believe it's like one of the only places in the world where all the stars align. So there's energy, yeah. there's, um, you know, there's so many things that, that brought, are bringing people to the city. In addition to that, it's the richness of the history and people just wanna have that, that premium, that small little intimate area, but having some really cool designs to go along with it. Cause Palm Springs is all about the history. It is, it is. I used to go there in high school. Uh, we had a saying in high school, it was right before Sonny Bono came in. And it was called "Come on Vacation, Leave on Probation." And, uh, that, that was in <laughs> that the is 80s. true. That was in the eighties, yeah. and then Sonny Bono came in and said, "We will have no more spring break in Palm Springs." But it was fun. In the 80s. Yeah, I've heard many stories about that. Oh, and when yeah. I started develop, when I started designing and developing in Palm Springs, I went back to the history because that was my general market. Is these high end clientele come down here because they want the enrichment, but they also want to bring back the originality of how the houses were structured, made. Who were the famous architects in that time? And if you can keep it period correct, you're going to get a higher premium on your resale value. That's great. You know, David, how how do you help your clients invest in their future? So I start with the whole game plan. A lot of people just want to, you know, have a secondary home and so forth. Yeah. What I do is I sit them down and I talk about their kids, talk about where their investments in, how to multiply it by 50%. And a lot of people say 50%, David, how is that possible? Yeah. So there's a huge niche here in Palm Springs, which is the vacation rental market. Yeah. If you know how to design it very well, you're going to, I mean, it's going to blow your mind on what you can receive weekly, monthly, but yet get this daily per day at a home in Palm Springs. It's all based off of the design, what amenities you're offering. And I think about this, we spend tons of money. We do tons of research on staying on uh, at these resorts. Right. Why can't we make each home look like a resort and bring in all these amenities so that you never have to leave and you can bring two families. Yeah. You know, I have a friend of mine who bought a really nice place in Palm Springs and designed it. And, and uh, the, the Jenners or the Kardashians stayed there and they, they put on Instagram how much they liked it and it just blows up. And I think there's a lot of big stars and a lot of inf very influential people who are now, they're either moving there or they're getting a second home, like you said, because it's beautiful and you can kind of work from anywhere now, you know? Yeah. And I think right now, the biggest thing that I kind of want to shake up the whole world and tell them right now is it's all about numbers. It's a numbers game all day. Yes. Are we buying at a hard, high market? I don't, it's not even about that. It's about what is your monthly payment? What is your monthly payment? How much can you get it rented for? And right now is the time that we open our mouths and talk to our family members and ask them for co-signing to go in with partnerships. Right. It's not about, you know, you know, just doing it on your own. The people that are wealthy right now 
are people that did it with multiple people. That's right. why they developed corporations. So if you can team up with your family members, friends, coworkers, even even roommates to buy a property right. out here or anywhere, you'll prevail. It's a good. It's a good market, David. Let me ask you, how did your upbringing kind of shape who you are today? I love that question. So my upbringing, that is so perfect because that's the person that I want. I want to be tangible to everybody. Yeah. I was uh, five kids, five kids in a one bedroom on welfare, um, had parents that were teenagers and so forth. So I had a, a very hard struggle. However, I seen nice, nice things in life. And that's what I was drawn to. I, I knew that I was creative. Um, I didn't have much you know, school or education behind me because no one was really pushing me that, but I knew I had creativity. And when I would walk into a property, I wished that a wall was gone or, or a, an open floor plan. Yes. And that's me at like eight, eight and seven years old. So for me, I just knew that there was money in my creation. And mm -hmm. that's how I turned it into the whole design aspect of it. Oh, that's wonderful. That, that's, that's great. So David, I ask, you know, really like-minded people, top producers and people who are shaking up their their um, occupation. Um, what's your morning routine? <laughs> morning routine is uh, I get calls that starting at 6 a.m. I have about 45 employees that do all the design work um, and the contractors and so forth. So I take a bunch of calls answering from Home Depot and Lowe's, um, answer those. And then I go straight into meditation after meditation, straight to the gym. If I don't get the gym in in the morning, it just blows my whole entire day off. But it allows me to answer emails on the treadmill. It allows me to have a clear mind. Yes. And it makes the physicality is huge. If you if you feel good within your own body, you're gonna be able to present something. And if you're if you are your walking business, real estate agents are a mobile and your face is everything, your body is everything because they want to have a showmanship, if you will. So in that all, that has to be dedication and you have to fit some type of cardio or, or some type of workout to release That's the right. stress. And, and really be a product of you. your, your walking image. You are your walking branding. You are branding yourself. So how That's good right. do you look? You know, it, it, it's a hey. statement and you've got to make it with yourself. So everybody, did you hear the great David Rio? So everyone, <laughs> you guys know, we all say the same thing. Every podcast you hear, we all say the same thing. I work out every morning. I meditate every day. I have my positive affirmations. David, let me ask you. Do you have any positive yes. affirmations that you say? I do. My, my biggest thing is number one is build what you love. Build what you love because that is that's your passion, that's your love. That's in the, love is such a big word. And when you incorporate that into your life every single day, you will elevate. My other biggest saying is live for today and plan for tomorrow. And that is for uh, all ages. And with me, you haven't missed the boat. But if you plan, if you live for today, and today's just, you know, you're not living on your means, but you're planning for tomorrow, that tomorrow affects so many people. It's your future, it's your mentality. But living for today, don't think about, you know, 10 years down the line and five years down the line because the average person, your goals will change in the next year. 100%. Years. Correct. David, can the way someone decorates their home have an effect? on their mood a hundred percent when i walk into a home i can tell it's specifically just on the living room who they are what their travels are how are they men their mentality based off of just a living room so when i walk in i want to know who you are show me is it is it is it are you family orientated are you very clean are you if you're a hot mess then you're a hot mess yeah but th this is the I, I think the changing of a home um getting rid of a lot of things sh shifting you don't have to actually have um everything all in one area shift your own furniture around in every room and put your your stuff that's in your master bedroom inside your living room right. uh, switch around tables furniture um do you know add in some accent pillows that brings color life texture um these are small things plants even if, and if you can't keep a plant alive go to home goods and get a silk plant but these are the things that really will make you feel happy when you come home oh and that's the funny. biggest thing is this Yes. Make your bed every single day. You could have a stressful day. You come home, you see your bed made. It's like yes. going to a hotel. You are in such a good mood because you already know that you have good sheets. Yes. It's already made. And it's that's one thing you want to just decrease <laughs> when you come home is to have a beautiful bed and spend some money on them damn sheets. Don't be cheap with the sheets, you know? You know, I'm really lucky because because my wife makes the bed every day. I never make it. I wake up, I roll out of bed, I run to the gym and I come home and my bed looks beautiful. And I'm like, See? I'm like, this is great. Kudos to your wife. I love that. She's, I love she's that. great. She is, um, she's, yeah, she does a great job. We've been together almost 20 years and she does a, 
She puts up with oh, me. Congratulations. So, you know, and forget about it. That's I, a tough enough job. And it's, yeah, it's so crazy that something by making your bed is actually changing your mentality. Yeah. It's actually allowing you to rest and think about tomorrow's showing, tomorrow's, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, what the rates are going to do. That's going to motivate you by making a bed. And that's and you know, so, you're right. so big. You're right. Because thinking about it, you know, if I had come home, my bed was unmade, you know, you look, your life's in disarray, right? It's messy. But when things are done correctly, your life is in order and it falls into place and, and you, you're, you're much more structured. You know, That's so true. David, how can someone maximize their investment, you know, with, let's say, uh, ADUs or vacation rentals? Easy. My biggest thing is I want to teach everybody your first home is your retirement. Yeah. It is not your forever home. So if you can talk to your wife or your spouse, your significant other, and let them know that the first purchase we're looking for, can we visualize two people, two families living in this one compound? Well, it's not a compound. If you have a detached garage, that's a compound. That if is. you have a detached garage, that's an ADU. If you have a detached garage, that was, that's your kids' tuition, your yeah. retirement, and we got to think outside the box. So if we can turn a garage into a full working ADU, I already know that's $2,000. And it's easy. Over, and remember that there's always going to be a market for renters and rent goes up every single year. Mm -hmm. So if you disconnect the, my forever home and understand that your first home is two units that'll last you forever. And then if you think about maximizing your, your retirement, how I do this is if you're sitting there and you have a ton of equity and your payment is, is, is so, oh, my biggest thing is this one, never get a mortgage that you can't have a renter make the full payment and then you're golden. The minute you have a renter that you already know that can make a $3,500 payment, $4,000 payment, whatever it is, by all means, um, that's, that's, that's going to, that's going to encourage you number one, to pull money out because for me, having equity is like a, it's, it's a blank uh, piggy bank. It's, yeah. you'll never be able to touch it. You'll just sit there forever. And if you're not pulling out your equity to buy another property, you're stagnant. That's and exactly. anybody in this world that's ever been wealthy is they're pulling out their equity, a portion of it to get another investment, to get another inv investment yeah. and understanding taxes. And you know, what blows my mind is this. So we're doing, you know, we have extensions right now on taxes and so forth and taxes, uh, your tax prepare should know loans. If they do not know loans, you're doing yourself a disservice. Mm -hmm. If they don't have a real estate license, if they don't, if they're not aware of the interest rates, then, th no, then you need yeah. to go somewhere else mm -hmm. because they need to elaborate on what you've done wrong this year, how you need to buy, how you need to co-sign for your son, your daughter, yeah. or pull money out for that. And so I think a lot of people are scared they're leaving California for all the wrong reasons. And if I could sit down with everybody and say, why are you leaving? This is your opportunity to stay here. We can elaborate on so much more thing and the wealth can only grow. There's only a portion of people that can actually afford California, yes. Orange County, or Southern California, just, just for that matter. Right. But it's, why are they moving here? Why are you running away from you the can best afford more weather? Than you'll you ever get it. Yeah. Well, it's about the weather. You can At the end of the day, it's about the weather. It is, yeah, but you can afford the more weather. than you think. You can afford more than 100%. you think. 100%. And David, you know the old saying, I don't know if you know this saying or not, but I love this saying. You know, people always say, well, should I wait to buy real estate? And you say, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait, buy that real estate and wait. Cause all you're doing is watching yourself accue at, you know, uh, get more money and more money and more money. You're curing, you know, all that equity because you bought real estate and you just waited and you just watched. A hundred percent. I, I had, you know what I had to do is I had to go live on Instagram and be like, here's numbers, you guys. For everybody that was hesitating, whoever told you guys not to buy in 2020, in 2020, the average person got 14% clear across the board. Now let's let's take uh, let's take that with a you know $400,000 loan. Oh my God, that's almost like $70,000 they they made in one year. Now divide that by 12, you're at $8,000 a month, and and that was free money. Let's say you you wanted to sell it in 2021, you just made $70,000. Right. I mean, you that's a full time and, but, and job. And that's so that and that's the thing. So I tell people all the time though, I say look. So everything runs in cycles. I've been doing this for 23 years as well. So when I'm talking to someone, if they say to me, Brad, look, I want to buy today, but I, I need to sell in nine months or I need to sell in a year, I, I will tell them, look, I'm not sure it's for you because if you're not planning on riding at least a cycle out, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, the market is really high. So I don't know what can happen in nine months. And I definitely don't want to cripple someone as well. So if they have the money to be able to rent it out. If they can rent it out, uh, they're good. Buy it, yeah. rent it out.
But if they say, I need this because I'm going to need my money in a year, that's the only time I'll tell someone, well, not sure this is for you right now. Because if you don't have at least a couple of years, you know, my dad was a financial consultant, David. And I used to say to my dad, you know, dad, I got killed in the market. And he goes, so what? I go, what do you mean, dad? I lost 30 grand in the stock market. What do you mean, so what? And he goes, oh, you sold your stocks? I go, no, dad. And he goes, so you didn't lose. And I go, well, no. And he goes, so when it goes up tomorrow, did you win? Like, you didn't, if, if you're not selling, it doesn't matter. So you're only hurt if you have to sell. So you have great advice, Correct. David, by saying, hey, buy. You're, you're, you're leaving money on the table. Now, a great thing to do is what you said, right? Maybe buy, pull your equity out, buy something else, let that work for you as well. Now you got two right. properties. Yeah, and the other thing too is understanding the taxes. If you don't live in it, let's say you buy it as a full, as a primary residence, you don't have to live there. You can, uh, things can change in your life. You can still implement and keep that same, yeah. um, that same type of, right. of structured loan. However, write it off as a hundred percent tax write off, yeah. and yeah. understand so that. It, yeah, understand. Start putting money away for your garage. You know, David, is, is your garage bringing you two thousand dollars a month? Yeah, David, you could do two things. You know, you could you could buy two houses at the same time live in one, right? Rent the other one out, build ADUs in both of them, okay? Now, let's say two years, you live there for 10 years, you've already been paying on the other, the other one, the mortgage is being paid by the renter. You lived in the other one for 10 years, now you made 400 grand. You go, well, I've been here two out of five years, I'm gonna sell it. I have no property, you know, no capital gains taxes because it's been my principal residence. You sell it. Now the, the renter who's been in your place for all those years, you say, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be moving into this one. You move into that one, right? And while you're moving into that one, you take that $400,000 from your other one, you buy two more places, you put that renter in another place. You could just shift things around and continually take free money without paying taxes as well because they're your principal residence for two out of five years, each one. Yeah, definitely. Without and the other me. thing too, is buy, buy a dump, buy a fixer. Yeah, upper, buy the worst house in the best area. Exactly. Because over time, oh, and understand this, this is where I've been able to prevail. Here in Palm Springs, it's all about development for the next 10 years. So I know exactly wh where the golf course is coming in. Um, is there a movie? Uh, is there, I mean, there's, is there big entertainment yeah. um, areas? You actually know, is, where is there... you know where to exactly. buy. You know where to buy. Exactly. We're going to have to talk. Because I know exactly what's being under development. I know what's planned and approved. And, and how, as a real estate agent, if you're listening to this, how can you elevate yourself? Do yourself a favor and go to the city and get a planned, approved project that's a list of them. And you already know what's going to be, you can already foresee what's Such in there. Idea. So you can ed educate your clients, understand who's lost their vacation rental laws, um, understand who, who has their vacation rentals, and understand what vacation rentals go for. Might go for 2000 a night. A mortgage, an average mortgage right now is thirty five thousand a month yeah. insurance, and it and it is crazy. If you do them, if you do the math, I mean, I I make no less than four thousand dollars profit on my lowest vacation rental, and that's receiving seven thousand dollars a month on one house. Seven thousand. That's a, that's a three bedroom small home. Yeah. We're talking about it can only go in increments of twenty thousand dollars a month. But where are you buying? And, right. and who's your demographic? Understanding what, what are you pitching it to? Or, or does it look like a resort? Are you getting this attraction? Yeah. Un understanding that's, Instagram, understanding know, hashtags. David, that's the biggest thing. You know, you, you keep saying it looks like a resort. So I just sold the house that I've lived in for 16 years with my wife. We made an incredible amount of money. We're, we're extremely happy. And the buyers that came in said, you know, Brad, you know why we love your house so much? Your backyard is like a resort. It's unbelievable. And I was, I was complimented because I built the backyard myself. Like I had not myself, but I hired people to do it. But, uh, but you know, it was That's my good. vision and everywhere you go, it's just a beautiful place to be. And I'm going to miss it. But I said to my wife, look, we've been here a long time. And my goal is to move to, to Laguna Niguel in a couple of years. So I wanted to take that money now and make it work for me so I could be where I want to be. So as you said, David, have a goal, know where you want to end up, know what you want to do. And that, that, right. that's what it is. So, so it's great. So David Rios, let me ask you. Yes. If you were Marty from Back to the Future and you got in that DeLorean, old David had to get in that DeLorean and wanted to tell young David something. Just what would you tell young David to, to avoid 
And what would you tell young David that he's got to do more of? Um, God, that's, uh, you know what? I, I, you know, that, that's such a, that's such a good question, but you know what? I, I kind of, as a, as a child, I already kind of knew what I can tell people though, have an open heart, um, be a sponge, take but advantage you tell, of You can tell young single... David that. You can tell young David that. Be a sponge. Buy, buy a Google, sponge. buy Amazon, right? Like, what, what, yeah. buy more of this, buy more of that. What, but there's got to be something that you made. Did you make any mistakes in life? I made, um, yes, I did. I didn't think the market was going to crash in 2007 and 8. And I bought all my family members' homes. Yeah. Um, and I was giving back. And I, and I tried to help a lot of people that were going through foreclosures. Yeah. And I lost everything. But then in hindsight, you know what? I looked at my life and I said, hey, who cares if these million-dollar estates are going away? I already have a home. I have another car. Don't, oh, I will say this. Don't buy over your means. Yeah. Be comfortable, Live but don't buy over your means. means. And you, you know, I mean, I was under 30 years old buying everything I possibly wanted. Mm -hmm. I never thought that I had 15 employees. I never thought the market was going to crash mm -hmm. the way it did. So I, I would tell young David to take risk. I would mm -hmm. tell David uh, to um, um, have zero fear, have Good. zero fear. Good and you. I mean, you're talking about someone that is dyslexic, that has ADD. I didn't, I didn't take a drug in my life, but I knew that I was creative and I went for it. I have had... I've never had fear because you know what? Once yeah. I lost my parents and I had nothing left, mm -hmm. all I had was myself. Do I want to live? Do I want to have more in life? Of course I did. And that's mm -hmm. what, that was, that was my driving force is coming from nothing, wanting everything. And the minute I have everything or still don't have anything, I still want to learn. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sponge. I want to learn everything. I want to yeah. learn. If you want to be the most successful real estate agent that you can possibly be, understand everything that um, mm -hmm. encompasses owning a home, understand taxes, yeah. loans, um, yeah. credit, um, design. That's going to elevate you. Know your you. craft. And never and know what you know want to do. It. Hey, David. And ask for help. Can I give you a good quote? You like yes. quotes? I so love you, quotes. You, you, so you talk about learning, right? You just said you, you should be learning everything. Well, John Wooden, who is a famous basketball coach for UCLA. If you look behind me. I, I know him, him very well. So I, I, knew him very, I knew him very well, too. Like we, my dad was close friends with him. So John Wooden's, one of his great quotes, David, was everything you know, everything you know in life, you've learned from someone. Everything you know in life, you've learned from someone. Isn't that amazing? Because people say, I don't like to learn. I don't learn well. Sure you do. You learned how to walk. You learned how to talk. You learned how to do everything you've ever learned. You've learned from someone. I, I, love, that, I love that you say that. The other thing too is that you guys... It, this is just my own opinion. Take it or leave it. I, when people say you're self-made, you are self-made. Oh my God, you're so, no, I'm not. I'm self-driven. I am not self-made. Doors were open. God opened things. Yeah. People were in my life at a certain time. I either had school or I took advantage of certain things. I am, I'm a co collaboration of so many things that allowed me to be successful. I am self-driven. I am not self-made. I never want to take the, the full responsibility. Like it's me. No, yeah. it's not me. Yes. I have the drive, but I think people, they were in my life. And it's so funny. You said John Wooden, because um, we've been doing his family taxes for 50 years now. Oh, and John yeah. Wooden, yeah, his, his grandson his, is also named John Wooden. He's a famous yeah. uh, designer and architect in LA. And we do his oh. taxes. He has, he has houses here in Palm Springs. He's, he's, oh. You know, wonderful family. And Laguna, Laguna, Laguna Niguel. Niguel. He lives yeah. Yeah, well, John used small to, world. Yeah, Coach Wooden used to live on um, Margate over in Encino, and um, you know my dad tells or my dad's passed now, but he used to tell a story um, when he was having a tough time with me in high school and and uh, beginning of college. He went up to Coach and he's like, Coach, I just don't know what to do. My son is wild. You know, I was an actor and I was just wild. And Coach, you know, he knew me and he looked at my dad and he said, Just let him be. He's going to figure it out. Let him be, just, he will figure it out. He's going to be okay. And my dad said, right when coach said that to him, he kind of just calmed himself and everything worked out. You know, I wasn't so far over the turn, but he just needed some reassurance. So um, I, I love the fact that you, that you know, the Wooden family are amazing people, you know. And I love it. I was well, go ahead. Um, I want to just elaborate on what you just said right now. A lot of people are going to hear this podcast um, and we're going to, it's going to touch people in so many different ways. If you see your son or your daughter and they're a little fidgety or they're, they're multitasking on so many things, do you know how brilliant that is? Yeah. If we can redirect that, that um, ADD or, or that intention or, 
or that, that mind is constantly moving, they, they, there's, there are successes and they can only grow from that. It's how you, you, you contour them and how you um, put them in different areas. Don't bring them down with a bunch of, you know, medicine and today's, today's, you know, give them this pill and that pill. Understand that they're creative and, and they might have a personality yeah. and that's going to prevail as a, being a real estate agent, mm -hmm. a designer. I love that you said that. And, and can I tell you that I absolutely love that you said that you are not self-made. You know, I, I say all the time that I'm self-made and I will never say that again due, due to what you said. But I, we know what I will say now. Like you said, I'm going to say I'm self-driven and I'm world made. I love that. I'm made by that. my experiences in this world. And the world has helped me be who I am. And I appreciate you. You're helping me be who I am by being on the show. And I appreciate you, you, and I appreciate you being here. What would you say is your, your interior design style, David? Oh, Nate Burkis and Jeremiah mixed with um, uh, Jeff Lewis flipping out. Yeah, so you get a little crazy. There you go. I Jeff am. does a lot of stuff in my area. I'm in Calabasas yeah. and Sino and... Yeah, he does a lot of stuff over here. That's I, I love pushing the envelope. I'm that person that's going to get dirty. I'm there cleaning floors, knocking down walls. I might, my, my, I can walk into a property and walk away from it in 20 minutes. And be like it's not worth it. Or yeah. I can go to, I can go to a property and literally be like, "This is it. We're buying it." And everyone's like, yeah. "Are you crazy, David? You're, you're going to really buy this?" I'm like, "Yeah. Why, why wouldn't I? I? I see the potential." Yeah, and that that's wonderful. So tell me about now. Now this is a very sexy name, okay? Tell me about yeah. Vibes by David Rios. Mm. It, it, I love that. So what I was thinking is I, I present these houses and I make them like the, the most extreme vacation rental you can possibly have. With that being said, I was like, well, they're going to go get a 20% off of someone else that's going to manage them, right. but they'll, they'll, it'll eventually fail because there's no designer behind it. There's no one that's going to keep up these crazy elements. So why not have something that's so so unique, so sexy. Uh, it, it's for a market that are trying to get away to be something so different. And that's where Vibes by David Rios came out because it's, it's a vibe Amazing. in every move, every room, every back wall, every accent wall, every wallpaper, every, um, you know, I turn garages yeah. into gyms. I want you to feel a certain way all over the house. And if I can make each room an Instagram moment, I, it, I've done my job. That, that's amazing. Job. That's great. And then you can put out a cologne to go with it and a perfume and it's all vibes by David Rios, right? You could do brand it. Speak. Yes. Yeah, speaking, speaking, speaking of that, we have daddy issues, trust fund, <laughs> dinero and brunch. Those are my scent lines. I have candles and they are so, they're very sexy smell. That's yeah, why there's daddy cool. issues. Uh, yeah, but yeah, feel free. Everything is davidreelsdesigns.com. Everything. It's just David Reels everywhere. It. I love um, it. But yeah, feel free to buy my candles. Feel free to, to talk to me. I'm an open book. So that's um, what I, I wanted to, that's, that's, that's what I want to get to next. So how can a listener get a hold of you if they ever want to come to Palm Springs and they want to, or, or any of the areas and they need your help, they want to hire you, they need advice. What do they do to get a hold of David Rios? Follow me on Instagram at David Rios Designs. Go to my uh, YouTube page, David Rios Designs. Go to my website, davidreelsdesigns.com, and you will find me. You will track me down, and um, I'm never too good to speak to someone going live on Instagram. I like um, helping people out. Um, I'm an ambassador for Floor and Decor, Home Depot, um, uh, uh, Living Spaces. Uh, we just taped with them yesterday. So any tips, tools, discounts that I can provide you guys, feel free. Use it. Are you, are you as on TikTok as well? I don't do TikTok, but if you follow my daily stories, I give you more than TikTok, baby. I, I am so quirky, funny, wild, and you never know what's going to happen in every job site that we go to. I try to go to 10 job sites per day. So wow, you're going to find good, a, a, good. my daily stories are super fun um, and I'm real. That's all I can say. I'm super real. Well, David, I want to thank you for being here. It's been a real pleasure meeting you and discussing uh, you know, interior design with you. I'm looking forward to actually getting some properties now and hiring you to do some some work or, or referring my clients to you. And for any of my listeners, remember, you can go to atrepodcast.com, download my five free videos on how to be successful in real estate today. You can also hire me to be your sales coach and you will get a book on how to thrive, not survive in real estate. I'll show you how to find your true authentic self and just really find out who you are and how others perceive you. You can also go to my website and sign up for a free coaching session so we can evaluate you. And just remember, as my dad always said, have an attitude of gratitude. Be good to each other. Oh, I love that. God bless you. Thank you again for this bless opportunity. You. I really appreciate your time.
And that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, many of my podcast listeners have become my coaching clients. If you'd like to be a coaching client, go to my website at www.atrepodcast.com and sign up for your free 30-minute coaching evaluation at www.atrepodcast.com. And as my dad would always say, have an attitude of gratitude.